Interesting times. Yeah, we've we've rapidly had to change our methods in terms of uh, doing the tutoring and keeping the, the the firm going. It's been interesting. Yeah, that's how Steve and I know each other. Actually, is uh, through tutoring my boy Jago, and uh, I think it's brilliant how you've managed to adapt and um, rapid thinking. <laughs> well, yeah, but just how slick it is. You know that what you've got set up, and and the kids are enjoying it. And uh, blimey, you can tutor all over the country now if, if, if your biggest problem is time now not not, not yeah I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> so brilliant thanks for being here steve um mel you're up next um i am also at primary school i'm far from headship thank you you can keep that yeah keep that yeah <laughs> yeah year one um mainly and reception um i'm a ta but i also do supply cover um so i've been teaching and supporting my uh, the teachers in there um, but also doing I, I do do a lot of cover so I've been trying to think of lessons and stuff um, have two children of my own a 13 year old and 11 year old one that's just about to finish primary so she's a bit gutted the other one mm. isn't too bothered he's just started she, he's in a, an all right year really I think um, and I am um, I've been, I'm on my own with them. I do have a boyfriend. He doesn't actually live with me, but he is doing temporarily. So that's brought another aspect into the whole thing because we've got something that we're not used to either. Um, and that's it, really. Just about hanging in there and smiling. Awesome. <laughs> and can I just say, pleasure to have you here as a female. Uh, some dads might be thinking, why, why is a woman in here? Is there any women in here? But um, different to some dads groups, um, you know, for me, it's all about actually having a strong relationship with women um, and making sure that um, we bring some balance in, into our lives. And um, it's too easy to get polarised and uh, and forget that there's um, a lot to, to learn and understand. So great to have you here, Mel. Thanks a lot. And Darren. Uh, over to me then. Um, I take more of the um, secondary space um i've been a supply teacher for a few years that's more past tense i've not been a supply teacher i was a supply teacher for a few years a few years ago that's there you go that's a slightly better sentence um and i've since moved out of education but i've always had a um, a passion for it so um and i've also done quite a lot of work in um, adult education centers supporting learning difficulties and things like that um, my last stint really was an intervention specialist um where i took people outside of the class um, that they were in, in order to, well, intervene, the, name, the names in the title, intervene in their education um, to catch them up and, um, in the different areas of struggle and more particularly for me for maths. Um, and I have a son who's uh, in year six. I'm probably not actually going to manage to go back into year six given the time scales mm -hmm. of things. We might end up going straight into secondary school. Um, yeah. That's me. Well, perfect to have your input and experience on that whole intervention and catching up thing, because there'll be a lot of, I know there's a lot of parents who are actually worried about that, to be honest. And David, good to, good to have you back here. Sorry, I didn't, I, saw you. You in the, I didn't see you in the waiting room, but, but thanks again yeah. for trying to get your camera on. Um, no David. problem. I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties, but I can hear you all loud and clear. We can hear you beautifully, actually. So uh, whatever's going on with the camera, maybe all power has been diverted to the microphone. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm a teacher of 24 years experience. Um, started off primary, then moved very quickly to SEN. And I was an assistant head of an SEN school, one of the largest in the country, for 12 years. Uh, I've now relocated back to Hampshire. And I'm working currently in an SEN school too. And I've got a son who's in year seven. And yeah, I'm, I'm of, you know, very much of the ilk of looking at the bigger picture with students and not worrying so much about academic achievement because throughout all my career, most of the students I work with don't fit into the rigid uh, academic system anyway. So it's about looking at other personal qualities that are not measured by tests. Brilliant. Again, that taps nicely into some of the concerns that parents are having about what, you know, what's this going to mean long term and stuff, which, blimey, when it's happened, when something happens to everyone, then that's a great level. And it's like you're going to be the only kid or the only family that's, that's going through this. So what I thought we'd do is if we break it down kind of into sections, because clearly we could chat about this for hours and we've got the value of having all four of you here. I thought if we talk about just 
how we get on with it. You know, I'm aware that I get the stuff come through from the teacher in the evening. There's probably some planning and preparation that I could do that would have the day go better rather than just turn it on at nine o'clock and hope that it's going to suddenly <laughs> click into action. So some insights into planning would be really great. Um, and then um, I think we can talk about just some, some, some structuring around how, how, how kids need to um, uh, approach a day with like timeouts and breaks and, 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 and things like that. Uh, and, then in, and then maybe in the second bit, just, to, just turn our attention to, does it really matter? And, 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 and you know, what we can do if, if we're actually at our wits end, you know, is it okay just to say, we're gonna be done for the day, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I don't mind how, I, I, probably easy that we just kind of go first and, let, and let, let the conversation flow from that. So um, yeah, let's talk about how we set our day up, what, what, what we should really do to make our day um, run smoothly, basically, as far as the homeschooling goes. Well, really first, first, it, first it, source of conflict, conflict, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it's probably um, start with some flexibility because everyone's opinion on this is going to be slightly different. Um, the, the important thing really is to get structure that matches the, the relationship between the teacher and the student, right? So in this instance at home, you're going to be a, a parent and, a, and, a, and a, um, a child, which is the same kind of um, teaching relationship. So it's really important to get that balance around you've got to have your day and if you're working from home remotely, that's got to be a really important factor. Um, and you've got to also balance the independent study from um, the tutored study. So if you're sitting next to your child and helping your child along, that's got to be mixed with letting your child get on with it. Um, and so I think those, those are really important bits. Um, and also I think it's really important to don't go to balance the creative and academic side of things. You can go um, really hard on, you know, let's do all the academic subjects and go for a, a big length of time. But in the environment that you've got, um, you don't have a teacher focused on it. And as a parent, you're very unlikely to be spending the entire day focusing on um, the right strategies and the right communication to, to build um, a more academic side of things. I think you wanna, like have a minimum so i i've i've got this whole complex study plan thing that, that i go through i won't go into too much detail because it will take up all the call um but i have a study session which is um, a minimum of 20 minutes um of study and it can stop at 20 minutes um because that's when um the kind of psychology around focus starts to wane so your average student should be able to do at least 20 minutes of actual study um and you can go longer than that if you've got um, investment into it and, and they're interested in, but having a 20 minute block of no distraction is really important. And then I'd also say breaks are really important as well. Um, and there's a, the two different types of breaks um, that are important to recognize as study breaks and just normal breaks. So a study break should be a break in order to recuperate your mental um, energy to go into your next study session. Um, and a normal break is just switching off. If you if you plan in your study breaks and you put an Xbox on the TV on or something like that, um, or anything that drains or um, pulls your attention, anything that the, a child is likely to go, oh, five more minutes, those kind of activities, avoid those. Because if you start playing on an Xbox, then you'll get that five more minutes, then five more minutes after that, and you get the tantrums. So if you have a tacit agreement um, between your kids that they really understand that, they can have a break from study, but they can't go and go on their phones or play on the Xbox or do anything that's really diverting that's going to pull their attention in. Something that's literally just switching off and rest only and then back into study and tie that up um there and then make sure you have plenty of actual breaks which includes doing whatever you want yeah um, so like a like a um hang out in the kitchen have a drink and a biscuit and just yeah yeah, yeah. like chit chat yeah. in the kitchen and, and, and also yeah so physical activities is, is a good one as well so get up go for a walk get out change your space for a minute before you come back into um your your study well, that's perfect because my two will generally fight given half a chance. So, <laughs> uh, have a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. You're fighting again. That's really positive. I've just found out. Yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I contribute there? Oh, sorry. Go sorry, ahead. 
No, I was about to say from a primary school point of view, what one of my big worries was when, when this all started is th for the hope that parents realise that, you know, after an, an hour in at primary, which you've probably spent about 20 minutes talking about what we all did the night before and then do, and you've had like a 40 minute lesson, they go and sit in assembly for 20 minutes. So they are sat and I, we all remember assembly at school. You're not concentrating really. So their, their brain is, is not working. And then they go outside for 20 minutes. So there's a big 40 minute chunk there where if you're still trying to work with them, you're putting yourself under a massive amount of pressure. They've got to have that downtime. And that's a really important thing. And, it, you know, get outside, get some fresh air and get away. And it is very important. Yeah. And the little ones as well, not just the, you know, the older ones. Mm. I think there's an opportunity there also to, to sort of talk to them a bit more about that, that side of it, about getting the balance right between the working time and the, the downtime and about looking after their, their, their thinking process and their brains. Because um, we do a lot of it for them at school. Um, they may not be consciously aware that, you know, the breaks are built in there for a reason. Um, the variety is built there for a reason. Um, but it, it, I think it's a good opportunity for them to become more aware of that because in the long run they've got to look after their own mental health and their own ability to, to learn and work um as well so you know we, i mean my wife and i are both uh, uh, teachers and stuff we, we've talked about this since they were like that high um so it's a topic of conversation in our household but um i think it's important for them to become consciously aware about how to manage their time and stuff and this is an ideal opportunity really yeah so the kid understands you this is a, you this is an amount of time where you're probably going to be quite effective and you're going to maybe even quite enjoy this subject i'll i'll help you start it and then you can get on with it and then after that we'll have a break and mm. play catch or like something something yeah, a bit active a, a biscuit and play catch kind of thing yeah okay and i just pick up on something that darren said yeah go for it dave david yeah uh, darren said you know about the average student and obviously um being an SEN teacher, you know, you, you have to, as a teacher of SEN children, you have to understand a child's point of learning and their learning habits. So as a parent, you know, sometimes that can be, that can be more difficult, can't it? Because you think, actually, does my child learn like this in school or are they just behaving like this because they're, they're with me? So, you know, I, I, I was I talked to all nine of my I've got a year 11 tutor group and I talked to all nine of them today and one of them a young man he still puts on his school uniform in the morning <laughs> because it helps him get into the mode of working at home because yeah. that worked for him you know whereas you that. it's nice yeah, really yeah there's another lad called Will who uh is he's very He's far more independent than than the others, and actually, he's picking and choosing when his learning time is. So, I think it's it's about us as we are all teachers, but we're teachers of of our own children. It's about trying to understand their learning behaviours as well. And actually, what would work for one child, as you as you said, Melissa, you know, some kids are sat in assemblies all all morning and don't start working. Some you know, I, I know just from experience, I had some pupils that only work well up until 11 o'clock. And then after 11 o'clock, because of yeah. their hunger or their lack of concentration, you know, you had to really downsize what your expectations were of them. So it's about us as parents understanding our, our children's learning behaviours, which is hard as teachers because we but actually that should come naturally to us shouldn't it because we all we all understand how but kids, I think kids work in different ways from a teaching point of view i think this is the time of year that you get to where you've kind of fathomed out your class as well so mm -hmm. you know that so and so is only going to get to quarter past 11 that morning yeah. or you, you know you know them because you're with them all the time um and and now it's it's back to the parents but you know, I know the parents, you know your own children, but like Johnny, you said before in the live thing, you've got a job to do as well at the same time. So, you know, that, that makes things, it throws another can of worms into the whole thing while yeah. you're thinking, I've got to do my job as well as, it, you know, so you're not in the right frame of mind yourself. 
No, yeah. and I'm, I've come to the conclusion over the last, because we're now, like, there's this week been back since Easter and um, obviously with the start today's Monday, but then the week before, before Easter and you know, I'm separated. I have the kids half the time. So in a way, I've almost come to the conclusion that when they're with me, trying to juggle work and their homeschooling is, is almost an un, a pressure that we, that we can't, really manage or I can't really manage and so so does that look like I'm going to focus on them and get their stuff done when they're here and I'm just going to just write off the work stuff and work much harder in, in the bits that they're, they're not here and as tough as that is well we're in tough times it's kind of what we've all just got to do to to, to be flexible and when that means that we don't end up in arguments and, the, and and no one ends up frustrated anxious upset whatever any of the above then um, then perhaps that's better for us all so can I, can I just drill down? Note, I, I've just had a call. I'm going to leave for 10 minutes. I'll be back. Okay, David, cheers. Cheers in, David. Um, I think it's really important to drill down further a little bit more before, because I think I, I got a sense that you may be moving on to the, the next topic. So just That's before fine. we move on, um, is that there's a couple of really important things to observe in the difference between home and um, in school. School runs in a certain way because they've got to manage 500 or more students. They have to have a schedule that fits the available resource, not fits the child. The, the, if, you look, if you dig into the research around the psychology and neurology of learning, independent learning is by far the most productive, so long as um, there's, there's not a specific learning difficulty that um, inhibits that. Um, and following um, the, the way your, atten your own individual attention works is also really effective. So one of the things that I do with my, the way that I do study plans is I literally just have the subjects that they, um, they're interested in learning just in a list. And then I go through next session is the next subject and go through. And if you miss a session because you want to go for a bike ride or whatever, it's fine. You just move into the next, move on to the next subject and skip a subject, but you can stick, stick, um, skip a session. So you're just constantly letting the opportunity to learn feed the activity to learn rather than what we have to do in a school is the, this is the fixed opportunity there's no there's no variable you've got a teacher at this point in time you have to do that subject at that point and really far on advance whereas at home you've got much more flexibility to allow a, a child if they're capable to be much more independent and really what you're doing as a parent is if you have the skills to kind of support the particular subjects and topic area great if you're good at maths that's going to be really really useful but actually really what you what you're trying to do um, is um, hold them to account um, and there's not really much more than that as, as the kind of minimum standard they know what they should be doing. You can talk to them about what they think they should be doing. You can work out what they want to achieve in the, in the timescales that you have. Have a really kind of uh, mature conversation about it and then just hold into account. Did you achieve what you wanted to achieve today? Did yeah. you do the thing that you said that you were going to do? Mm -hmm. not, not because I said you were going to study X, Y, Z, but you said you were going to study X, Y, Z. And holding into the account is by far the most powerful way of driving in that in, intrinsic motivator which is much more important than the extrinsic mm -hmm. motivators mm -hmm. that you might have so if they've got a subject they would prefer to do and they want to do that first thing is you're saying that's it's better to let them do the subject they want to do first thing what happens if that's a make and do project and and they <laughs> they want to leave the maths till the last um so the Oh, what you want to do is look at the impact over time. Are they balancing the different subjects over in accordance with uh, the priority or value of those subjects? If they're just picking the thing that they're fascinated by and they're doing that for the entire week, like my son's just got a, picked up a, a fascination and he wants to build this um, kind of fictional universe that he wants to then write a book about. Um, and then he's, then he's just like battering that all the time. <laughs> well, that's, you're then neglecting the opportunities and responsibility you have for the other areas of learning. So that's where I'd say, like, let them f flow with whatever, um, within reason, whatever makes sense for them, um, so long as they're not um, weighting a bias towards something. Like, if they're, if they're leaving maths to last because that's the time when you neglect to hold them to account, and that, way, that means they're not going to end up doing it, then, yeah that's the wrong way around. But if they end up doing the maths because it fits with the way that um, their brain's working 
they happen to be better at maths in the afternoon than they are in the mornings or more motivated and etc then that's completely legitimate so it's about it's not about telling when to do stuff it's about making sure they hold account across the balance of the subjects that they're doing yeah okay Does that cool. make sense yeah totally and steve you must experience that when you're tutoring someone you've got on the one hand a set amount of time on the other hand what you want to achieve and then finally what the kids capable of or willing to do yeah i mean it's, it's, it's the same as being in the classroom you're constantly readjusting things for the individual um I mean, I've built a, um, a, a for, the, for the 11 plus kids in particular, I've built a particular program to try and get us to the same point um, in the year because obviously we're aiming for a particular date in the year. Um, but within that, you know, you adjust, you adjust things as you go along and you can see sometimes that you just need to take um, a, a step back from things and have a little, spend a few moments just talking about what they've been doing the weekend, just giving a bit of a break. I mean, the sessions are now an hour long rather than two. Um, I think they're probably a little bit more intense than they were before because within the two hours, we always had uh, brain breaks. We always, we always played games together. We always had time to have a chat together. So, so we built in the sort of things that um, Darren's been talking about within the sessions anyway. Um, yeah. There's a little bit less of that now, which is um, a, a slight worry, but they, they all seem to be they all seem to be coping with it. Um, we've got, I've got one, one parent who's, um, actually booked me for two, two sessions a day. And I think I, I become the sort of the bookends to his learning. Um, so I start him off in, in the morning and then I was like having an afternoon session. And I think that's the end of his learning for the day, um, which was an interesting way of doing it. She, uh, she nads a couple of sessions each day just to, to give him a bit of structure. Um, but I mean, he's, he's exceptionally good at maths. Um, so I've been able to take him into some of the um, the GCSE uh, seven, eight, nine work, um, take him as far as he wants to go. Whenever he asks a question, take him that way. So in a way, it's, it's sort of become a um, for him an adventure in, in mathematics, adventure in in, in uh, GCSE. So um, he's he's loving that kind of thing because he can then just explore ideas and thoughts he's, he hadn't had access to before. So yeah, that's that's quite nice thank you for that yeah well i just want to share uh, i asked francesca so francesca I, I mentioned her at the beginning of the call she said uh, I, I just found her facebook comment to me she said um uh all right hi johnny i won't be joining your chat i'm afraid as i'm already struggling to get my kids homeschooling the cleaning the cooking and my own head of department role done but i will say this you'll never be able to teach your children like their class teacher because you have a totally different relationship based on an entirely different set of wants and needs I'm a teacher and I can't do it. So I, it was, and, and there was a couple of other comments in different groups as well in the, in the dad, soul group, a, a, a dad slash teacher said exactly the same thing there. Um, schools are so incredibly structured like the army. You follow a timetable to the limit. You have routines of how to stand, sit down, move about literally everything, but then you're at home. How could it possibly be the same? Um, it's like Darren was saying before you know at school you've got to have that structure there's how many kids with I mean we have 200 and odd but you've, you don't have that structure but I do think I personally have found a little bit of structure hasn't gone amiss for us mm. we are still trying to do the 9 till 3 but and what Steve said another key word is be adjustable it doesn't, you know, don't beat yourself up if you have a bad day and you don't, the, the child doesn't do anything. If you are all still smiling and happy at the end of the day, that is what matters the most. Yeah. You know, readjust, look at it again, start again tomorrow. Really. Same at school, though. We have those days at school with them. Don't we? we have days when we just go, yeah. nothing yeah. happens with them, and the, you know, just pick it up again the next day. And Mel, thinking yeah. of the kids, the sort of age group you teach, I've read somewhere you once, try, like kids who teach. Pardon? No, go on. I was going to say, yeah, you, you're right. We tried to teach. I know we've had a maths yeah. and English session. Like, but kids, well, kids in Sweden, the apparently, they don't really start uh, structurally learning it, like in school until like seven years old, and 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 they catch up just as quick as as as, as kids in other countries. Um, so kids in reception and year one, they're learning the basics, aren't they? They're they're, they're playing. They're learning the social discipline. They're learning colors and shapes and how things are formed together so is is if the school sending work home for those kids how important is it that that 
that they follow it or is you know is is, is that more just about the kids being and getting through the day and having an enjoyable day well we we set out because that's the age group that i am in we um frantically in that crazy week before everything stopped put a huge pack together for them handwriting phonics and maths that we can refer to but obviously now we're coming into another term and basically we're just trying to adjust and see if we can touch on it like for example this term i would do um a bean plant diary with them and growing and we do it'd be our topic subject in the afternoon and we do it so yesterday for the first time ever which took me a lot to, to get up I, I decided to do a youtube video and i've done it and put a bean down that they can download it's 10 minutes for them and it just it's a bit of fun but hopefully they'll have fun and still learn the worry for me at that age is is that someone's got to do it with them and i, I think that is what the, the really tough thing mm. is I think if you get to maybe year five year six even year four they might be able to depending on the child you know you they, they could work independently but but for me that's the pressure i think on the parents is you can't just say to the year one Oh, here's Miss Bersto. Go and do that bean diary. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's like like here's, you say, you, here's you a book. look out of the room go. and it's like, what has happened here? Yeah. You know. there's, there's an incredible amount of skill in in year R year one teachers in terms of questioning and drawing out um, ideas and structuring their understanding and stuff. I mean, it, it, you, I mean, I sat and watched it as a head teacher. You know, busy taking notes and things. Um, just stunned by how incredible the, the, the way in which they just structure things for them. So that's a highly skilled job. And I, I think parents are not going to even, most parents won't even know it happens that way. Most people won't. No, ever, and they, they think it's a glorified play school. Like, oh yeah, it's just one year. Up school <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. No, I, I promise you it's not. No, I get that. But it, it would be easy for a parent to think that, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, it's just, they're just little kids. You know, they're just, they're just having fun, surely. Yeah, but it's not. It's, it's real foundational stuff, yeah. So I think there are a couple of things worth mentioning. Um, with um, respect to what schools send out, um, I would say that there are th there's two real values um, of, of that material. One is um, consistency with your peers and then consistency with the teacher. Okay, so the, the, if, if you do that work, then you're more likely to be on level with what your peers are doing um, and not off piste. And you're also going to be more in line with what the teachers kind of trying to follow along. Their job is obviously now much more difficult to work out where everyone is in their class. You've got 30 people that are all remote. One of the things that a teacher is going to be doing actively throughout the year, no matter what level, is what's called formative assessment, trying to understand where the, um, each student is so that they can understand what is the next step for that student. And collectively doing that for 30 people is difficult enough when they're all in the same room, but obviously when they're all remote, um, then that's um, uh, much, much more of a challenge. I'd also say that um, the child's needs are always more important than anyone else's needs. Um, the, the school's needs, the, the teacher's needs, your needs as a parent, they're always much more, always have precedence. So if it makes your life easier to follow what the school's give, giving, then great, go right ahead and do it. But, but what we also need to recognise is sometimes the, what the school is going to be providing right now, especially during this period, is, going, is quite likely... I'm going to try and say this without being offensive to anyone <laughs> um, is, is likely to, to be at risk of being subpar because this is very, very new. Right. So what they're sending out is possibly not going to be, um, ideal for the situation they're doing their best that's that's, that's the thing they're, absolutely, they're, they're doing, absolutely doing the their best pants, yeah, yeah. doing their best guessing yeah exactly yeah, they're they're absolutely guessing. so a uh, sterling job no doubt but the, the reality is that that might not be the best quality generally and it also might not be the um therefore directly applicable to what your child actually needs so always look at what you're use it as with, with a pin, pinch of salt and if you've got something that is better for your child and you know it is because you've paid attention to them then that's what they should be doing especially during this period yeah. Ev everyone's got to do catch up when we get back off yeah. off lockdown everything's going to be a mess there's going to be lots and lots of problems if you solved your child's problems then that's that's the important thing um all the rest of it will, will come together yeah and is there but okay let's, let's just you know so in, in the interest of time keeping keeping tabs on time this whole catching up 
subject. I think you've all got a, a point to, to make on this from the different age groups you teach, the different experiences you've got. Um, you know, can, how in, can kids catch up? Should we be worried about them missing out? Um, I don't, I'm not necessarily asking about, oh, what's the solution to this, but just taking the current situation out of the, out of the Thank You'll subject. be pleased to know there is a solution. Oh, okay, great. Um, <laughs> so, but, certainly but, but parents that are worried about their kids falling behind or they're, or they're going to miss out on stuff that they're never going to learn again. Um, you know, if we could just offer some, some reassurance and some, I don't know whether it's advice or insights around that subject, it would be, it would be really great from each of your perspectives. If you guys don't mind me going first this is kind of my area because i'm a, my 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 fascination is with intervention is with that kind of catch-up phase um and really what it's about is study skills and study habits if you teach your children to be effective learners they'll pick up anything and that's really what like being an expert that's a skill at for picking life. up that is a skill for a, life. absolutely and that's really what the skill is that's the primary skill in in going to school when you go to school it doesn't matter what you're learning it matters how you're learning and it matters that you are conscious as a student of how that's going in and you are editing um, that process whatever your teacher puts in front of you you're consuming that in um, the the most appropriate way it's not quite it's not really scientifically valid but there's a habit of, of um, having kind of visual auditory and synthetic kind of thinking as a way of sectioning the ways that people think again it's not 100 percent valid but it it does section things in a, in a convenient way of looking at visual learners, auditory learners, and so on. So as a learner, you're going to understand how you best learn and convert the information in front of you into the, in, into the most appropriate um, format for you if you're an expert learner. So really, that's what you need to be feeding your kids right now is how to be an expert learner. You're going to teach them things about how memory works. So that, that means as a um, faux educator <laughs> as a parent that's what you need to learn you need to know, learn how memory works you need, you need to understand what tools you can do to increase um, consolidation of memory and the ability to recall information so that you can pass that on to your your, um, your kids and the primary skill set that a teacher has when you look at a talented teacher in my view anyway it comes um, back boils down to a 2000 odd year old process called the Socratic method. The Socratic method is by far the most important um, way of um, helping people learn. And for those people who don't know instantly what that is, there's plenty of stuff in Google, um, but it's basically help questioning um, to lead leading people to um, to the information by driving their curiosity so that they go and seek more information. Right. So, so that's, just so that's like, so practically that's like, so why did they think that? Or so, so yeah. what happens next? Or Ask, what, yeah, 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 brilliant. Two, yeah. two really good, two really good um, angles straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and just from your point of view, Darren, kids, kids can catch up and they will catch up, right? If you give them the tools. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, let's go to Mel next. So start from the young kids and then go up to Steve and the older kids. I was going to say, from a primary school point of view, and I hope Steve agrees with me on this, we, you do reiterate everything every year. You, you go, not absolutely everything, but your main solid basics that you want. Every year, you go through it at more depth. So things that, that they have missed out on, they're going to get again in year two. I mean, they come up to us from a reception, and you say, have you actually taught this in reception? It's like, yes, we spent three weeks on it, and the kids don't even remember it anyway. <laughs> So that's even when you've been at school. So, you know, mm. it's something that, that Joe here apart not to worry about because they'll go into year two and they'll, they will do the, the basics again and then they'll go to year three and they'll do it again. So it is constantly being instilled in them. Yes, they're going to miss out on their exciting things that, you know, that they've not done like a trip or we study about Neil Armstrong, they won't do that again. But they'll do other things and they're, they're learning the, the little, from, from a little child's point of view. Um, which I think is a bit very different to what Darren was just talking about. They they are going to bounce back, and and people are at primary school those that you know may be falling behind, not falling behind, or, or those that are, are behind because there's a massive age difference. You've got some of the kids are a year different anyway, so they're already behind before you're even homeschooling. Um, they they're on the school's radar. The schools know when you come back who it is that maybe 
you know, might need a little bit of help more than so and so, which to be honest with you, happens at Easter holidays, happens at summer, you know, summer holidays is a biggie anyway. And you know when, when they come back, who, which kids mm. you, you're going to target and, and they're probably going to need extra help there anyway. And that they'll soon, having watched, two, you know, um, one and a half lots go through primary, but by the time, I don't know about you, Steve, by the time they get to year six, you think, wow, I never thought that would happen in year six, you know, yeah. so it, it does happen. It, but I can understand my parents that, you know, are worried, especially, you know, I, I'm worried about my daughter who's in year six going into you know going into yourself i think it was you darren you've got a yeah. someone a, is it your boy yeah and yeah. you know they're gonna miss out on that massive transition but it's okay because the rest of the country are in the same boat so not yeah. one child is going to rock up who's been at school since my everybody's you know in fact it's probably a positive thing because that's what they're all going to be talking about it's going to probably bring them together more because they've got a good you know point conversation so there are positives, I hope, that are going to come out of this, really. Yeah, my son said, to start with, he said, oh, I, I'm quite enjoying it. I I'm, I'm, I'm can do my work at my own speed. I don't have to put up with the kids that are, that are, that are mean to me. And, um, and I'm seeing you more, Daddy. And then last weekend, just gone, I heard and him on his week Xbox. Two. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard him on his Xbox. <laughs> that was brilliant. I think some parents who, who are sort of, don't, don't like they think that their kids are up to no good on their xbox when they're talking to people or whatever they're not they're talking to their friends and they were having this conversation it was amazing they were saying well i quite enjoyed it to start with but now i'm actually missing the work they said I'm, i miss my teacher i mean like all the things that you think the kid wouldn't be missing he was they were having a really grown-up conversation about what they're missing and what they're looking forward to to, to getting back down to so see, um, even that's a massive life skill to have. There are a lot of people that won't talk socially. So to be able to start doing and doing this interaction on, online is a huge life skill for them to learn. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of kids, a lot of teenagers won't talk to anybody. So. Yeah, exactly. And Steve, your, your experience on, on kids, so parents worried about their kids um, getting, getting behind and, and kids' uh, adaptability and, 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 and ability to catch up. Well, Melissa mentioned two things. One, she mentioned the summer holidays, which we, we know that, that, that some children experience quite a dip over the holidays. The other one was the, the summer borns. And, and, and as Melissa says, they, they, they can be a year apart. Um, you know, if, if they're coming to school at age four and the person next to them is age five, someone is 25% older than them sitting in the same room. And but we we looked into it when when I was a head teacher. We looked into it, and what we discovered there was there was two groups of summer born. There was a group that seriously were behind the rest of them, and there was a group that had caught up, sometimes gone past. And the difference was how interested their parents were in their education. So this is a great opportunity for parents to show that they're really interested in their kids' education because it's the single biggest factor in success it really is um throughout the primary school because you can tell you can absolutely tell which parents are interested in the kids um education and which are not it just shows in everything they do their approach to work how much they want to, to push themselves um how much they enjoy the learning experience itself um and i think at this point in time if you if you can show interest in what they're doing i think you're going to have a, a really positive effect on what they do um, about going back to school, I mean, I, I can absolutely guarantee that certainly from year three up, the first thing teachers are going to do is work out where they are now, <laughs> you know, because you've had this massive gap. The first thing you've got to know is where are they now? So there, unfortunately, there's going to be a, a degree of internal testing and assessment going on when they return. But um, I mean, talking about formative assessment, without that, we wouldn't be able to you know, rebalance where we are. Because um, at the moment, it's a very difficult um, job to try and you know, identify the next step for any individual. Um, my wife's a year six teacher, and uh, you know, that, that's the, her biggest frustration is that she, she sets the work, she gets a degree of feedback and stuff coming back to her, but she's not there looking over their shoulder, talking to them about what they understand. So she's feeling a little bit, well, you know, I'm not sure, certain of where they are. Um, so that would be the first thing that we'll do, you know, people will do when they get back is to say, right, okay, let's find out where you are. Let's see what you've retained. Let's see what you've gained. Um, and then reestablish the formative assessment from there. Yeah. Which makes me wonder, sorry, Johnny, about the, about the going back. Because I know there's a lot of people that want them back, but when this talk about June the 1st, 
And you kind of wonder, which ties in with the summer holidays, Steve, you know, if they go back and we assess them for three weeks and yeah. then they're off again for another six weeks, yeah. you know? So I can understand why people want their kids back at school, but I can also understand why it's going to edge more towards September mm. because you'll be doing your job like twice really. Mm. You kind of want to, if, we, if we assess them, that's wonderful. Right, that's where they are off you go for another six weeks and it's like well we've got to do all that again really because I, sp I suppose the government's only other choice is to say right if we start on the first of june we actually teach through um till say late august have a couple of yeah, weeks could extend the academic year yeah yeah well, then they've said no option there, okay. them, they? but, but that's the thing we don't you we just don't know do you so from a what no. are we going to do and how's it going to yeah. work for you it's very difficult to it has to be said, like, on, on sort of the negatives of all this stuff happening, we, we learn through adversity. So, um, you know, having, going through um, adversity throughout your life is one of the things that prepares you for future adver adversity. Obviously, we want to make sure that that, that adversity is um, not excessive amounts of trauma, but there's loads of healthy adversity that you experience in your life it's very mm. you kind of you know it, it reaches the peak of the stress tolerance but otherwise it's something that you consume and, and you learn from so this is i'm sure there are going to be edge cases where it's very very traumatic um what's going what's going on right now but for the vast majority of people it, it's i think it's quite an opportunity for parents to like kind of coach and mentor through that that transition in in life is it should in a couple of years we look back at you know remember that time that we you know we learned something about ourselves yeah. or you know i mean so and here's something practical i want to ask right what <laughs> guess this is what <laughs> when the kid's not doing something right and this is i don't know how teachers don't throttle half their class during the some part of the school year right and some of them that's literally it's English, just the rule Johnny, yeah. <laughs> no, I know I realize that, but uh, like, blimey, when when you've asked someone 10 times to do something, they're still not doing it, and you know, and, and clearly pressures. But so, there's a little bit of tongue in cheek in, in this in this in this question. It's a sort of as I'm going to try and keep this to an hour and wrap it up in a bit, but you know, when when you're battling with a kid, when you're doing it, it's generally not your kid, right? You're in a class, there might be more than one kid you're battling with, but at what point when you're battling with them to do a piece of work? Do you, I don't know, do you, do you just try and come at it from a different angle or do you just say, actually, we're going to move on and do the next thing? Or like, because lots of parents don't want to have those, those friction points or, or those bust ups. Um, so what, what could be some practical things that they could do to avoid, um, <laughs> avoid them and certainly avoid the, uh, the shouting? Um, choice is a good one. And there's two ways to go. Either you can give them two genuine uh, choices um but it's a choice of which one do you do first uh because i mean if you think from a child's point of view they get very little opportunities to make decisions and choices for themselves so that's always a powerful thing the other one is the is the uh non-choice so you give them two choices one of which you definitely know they're not going to want to do um <laughs> so that works quite nicely too so i mean cho but choice is a powerful thing and and um you know, if you get them involved in, in making decisions about um, when they do things and how they do things, it's a lot easier then to turn around and say, well, you know, why didn't that happen? You know, what are we going to do to change that? Um, because then they get a little bit more um, control in their lives, which, you know, they don't get a lot of. So I think choice and a little bit of uh, control handed over probably would be a long way to sort of persuading them to do, to do what you want them to do ultimately. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, a similar kind of thing, really, I'd say. I, I often find that if um, you sat there with, because I often work with like little like, booster groups, and and um, if it's if it's not working, just ask, you know, ask them what they think. Get them to feel like, very similar to what Steve said, get them to feel like it's their idea and they're telling you and they're doing the input and then they don't feel like they're being told, which... Again, it is is easier to do with other children, I think, than to yeah, do of with course, your of course, yeah, yeah. Remembering that as well. But on the flip side of that, with them being your children, you really kind of know how they tick, and you know when it's going off the boil, and you know you you know when to back down. But 
choose your battles really mm. yeah that's good but choose your battles wise words there definitely mm. I, think I'd offer, I think i'd offer a couple of things um one of the first thing that comes to mind is kids are opportunistic um in, in this kind of extends on on the choice scenario um but try and understand the underlying psychology of the child behavior, right? Um, if your child comes down, um, I'm a little bit poorly today, I don't really, I'm not really feel like study. Um, I always go, is this a, you, a level of poorly that you wouldn't attend school, would we be calling your school right now and not going to school or not? So to kind of have that kind of benchmark. But also if you go, if you're feeling, feeling a bit poorly, then, oh yeah, you can play the Xbox or watch movies or whatever. You'll quickly find that they start feeling more poorly more often <laughs> um, because they, you know, work is rewarding when you've got the success out of it, when you've got the epiphany, when you've got the learning, but ultimately work is work. Um, and they will take a sick day if they can get away with it. And the sick day is very attractive to a child who is just going to be playing on the Xbox or watching movies all, all day long. So understand the opportunities that they're looking for and, respect that a child even a studious a kind of quite a studious child is going to be every now and again going actually i'd rather have an easy day off and it's okay to have an easy easy day off so long as it's understood what is being requested like i'd like a day off today that's have a, a frank conversation i'd like a day off i'd like half day off or whatever i just want to chill and watch movies and so long as that's the conversation you're having not oh, i'm feeling a little bit poorly because they're trying to take advantage of you and trying to take the opportunity to play the xbox you're not having a, you're having a disingenuous conversation at that point yeah. and that's that's counterproductive um and then also i think we're, we're moving more into the realms of kind of more parenting technique rather than educator technique. But otherwise, I think it's really important to have um, consistency. So if you say you're going to do something, that's what's going to happen. Um, and when, when you give them the option, give them the option in one slice. This is your option. Not this is your option, repeat it several times. This is your option and let them change their mind later. This is we're going to have this conversation once you're going to make a choice and that's what we're going to do. And then if they don't do that, if they're not self-disciplined, because self-discipline is more important than um, kind of prescriptive discipline. If they're not self-disciplined, then respond to that by holding to the count, by not, not letting them just get away with playing the Xbox, et cetera, if they just, you know, lays off. Um, and that's, that's kind of a really important thing. If, if the, if your child knows that you're going to, if they just ask, have to ask you, like literally they'll have in the back of their mind an intuitive sense. If it takes 15, 50 or hundred times of asking the same thing and you'll say yes, eventually that's how many times they're going to ask you. <laughs> so, um, and if, if they know that they can ignore your instruction five times or for 20 minutes, that's how many times you're going to have to ask them. That's how long you're going to wait for the, for the response. Or if they know that when they ask you a question, you get one answer that doesn't change, they'll respond to that answer. You know, that consistent, they, they, they are they're designed to learn from the environment and that's why it's a really good time to learn as a child because they're soaking everything up and while they're not at a level where they necessarily are conscious of all the things they know they know things about you they know what makes you tick just as much as they um you know what they they take and they will not even not maliciously not because they know consciously what's happening or do it on purpose but they know what your buttons are and they'll press them so yeah. just make your buttons more difficult to press and make make sure they're more consistent when yeah. they get pressed. And I can see they'll they'll play a number on the parent way sooner or or, or with more um in a more challenging way than they would do with their teacher. So yeah. when I if I say something to my daughter, I bet you're not like this to your teacher, well that's a stupid thing to say because there's absolutely no way they're no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I suppose Johnny, from from your point of view, that's that that is what you're gonna do and you'll you'll find it hard, I think like what Darren was saying for the first, I don't know, week, and then afterwards it gets instilled. But from your point of view, and maybe from other dads that are watching there, you're not with your kids. Maybe you might have them for four days, and on that fourth day you might think, well, I've, I've won this, I've got this now, and then they go away, and then they come back, and then you start again. Because yeah. mum didn't do it like that, <laughs> and it was different there. So it's just a vicious circle, really. Yeah, it's, that's, that is tricky so that, for the kids. Yeah, definitely. That makes it hard for, you know, for the kids as well, because they've got to, you probably aren't parenting the same. People who, who aren't together probably aren't parenting the same because that may be one of the and downfalls that's that, you know. 
generally speaking, not only is that common, but it's also most of the time, okay, that's what should happen in different environments. Yeah. Your house yeah. is different to your partner's house or your ex-partner's house, and your both parents' house is different from the school environment. Um, that's yeah. that's okay, you know. Oh, yeah, no, well, it's got to be, otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't be apart, would you? Yeah, and I, so, I, you know, I think more, what I've learned from all this is in some sort of wrap-up is that our kids whatever age probably have quite a good idea of of how they like to learn already mm. and asking them is 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 a bit of a leveler it gives them a degree of choice and can actually help the day go quite smoothly build in a mixed amount of play so that it's so some proper play and other just it's a time for their brain to just switch off and relax for five minutes before getting back on with it um don't <laughs> what You've been taking good notes <laughs> yeah well i've got to it's all up here um and you know that and they'll catch up you know that i think that's there's this kind of stress and concern that we've got we've got to we've got to be as good as a teacher we've got to make this moment with cats like they're back at school they're all going to go back they're all going to be in the same boat um i think steve said it said it very nicely that you know it's the parents that take the most active involvement in their kids education it, you know it shows up it's evident in, 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 normally mm. so <clears throat> so the best we can do will be enough for, you know if, if we're interested yeah. and we're concerned it, it, that, that, that they're doing it they're concerned that it's going well that probably shows we're being conscientious enough and um like it or not they're all going to be in the same boat and um, and our fabulous teachers are gonna are gonna pick it up just like they always do and and, and do a wonderful job for our kids. Soldier on. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. I, I miss think, them. Uh, <laughs> I, I miss the kids massively. Mm. Really, really oh my good. gosh, totally. You hear people talking about missing work, but in work, you don't have the kind of emotional bond that that, that, uh, that i see parents and uh, sorry that i see teachers develop with their kids and the same with kids with their teachers you know um um tears at the end of the year is, is um is not just uh, the kids i'm sure um so blimey for teachers this is an incredibly challenging time for teachers and uh i hope out of all of this people can see the amazing job that 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 key workers in in, in all areas do they're not just doing some average thing that none of us can rest of us be bothered to it, it really is a calling and and the commitment that it takes to do that is is deep and takes long hours and 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 commitments that most people don't even see so thank you to all key workers in that respect but also thank you to you guys for for being here tonight and and, and sharing is there anything i've missed is there is there anything that i should have learned from this that, that we haven't covered no just take yeah. one day at a time comprehensive summary was very well put <laughs> brilliant well i'm sure not all of this is 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 relevant but obviously steve here um i know steve through his lasting tuition um company so anyone who's in kent or even now steve in, international, I'm international anywhere in the world fancy in doing Mar the Mar 11 Mar plus Mar for any reason <laughs> um but no, Steve and his team, um, you, you coach kids uh, at different, various stages through the, through mm. the educational uh, journey. So uh, definitely look up Lasting Education. Is it? No, Lasting yeah, Tuition. Education, yeah. So, go on, Steve, you say it properly. Yeah, Lasting Education is the company. Lasting Learning Centre is uh, where we're based. It's in Kings Hill. Um, but as I say, now we can go international, can't we? Yeah. Do you have a, web, you have a website you want to plug? Um, yeah, uh, www.lastings-education.org. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Mel, oh my gosh, the biggest spider just walked in here. I don't even mind spiders, but that was huge. Um, <laughs> Mel and I are old friends uh, of what is now about 20 odd years, Mel. So uh, lovely to see you oh, and man. thank you for being here. Darren and I just met in this last week, but it's our second Zoom call in seven days. So great to be getting to know you as well, Darren. Um, and Steve, as I said, you're doing a wonderful job for my kids. So thank you very much for that. Pleasure. Guys, share Team Super Dad far and wide with uh, with the dads, uncles, grandparents you know. Uh, thanks to those who've been watching and to those who are watching the, uh, the recording. If you've got any questions, pop it in the comments. We do these hangouts on Monday nights at 8 o'clock and on Fridays at 12.30. Uh, whether you've got a, a question, a joke, a problem, or, or just something you can add to others, then come and get involved. 
My name's Johnny Jensen. This is Team Super Dad, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. See you later.